Hello, everybody. Come on in. We are rolling. I am fired up for what we're going to be doing today. This is so much fun. Um, and not just today, but for the next several days, you have registered for the Positivity Power Up live with me. We're going to be meeting five days in a row, one hour each day. And I've got some details for you about how that's going to to shake down, but come on in. We will have a chance for you to ask some questions today. Um, I went ahead and enabled the chat today also so that you guys can talk to each other. If you want to uh, use the chat, we've opened that up. There's also a Q&A that comes just to me. And uh, I will have save some time at the end for some Q&A, but let's jump in, shall we? I think we're ready to roll. I didn't even do an introduction. I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins. I'm a professional psychologist. My specialty is positivity. And that's why we're here today, to power up your positivity. You've probably heard it before. Just think positive. And it's kind of a trite, fluffy phrase that you'll hear from motivational speakers or, or professional development people. Look, we're going to get past the trite, fluffy version of Just Think Positive into the powerful, powerful psychology that's behind that. So buckle up. We're going to move fast. We have uh, five days in a row that we're going to be doing this. Okay, let's pull up uh, a couple of visuals so that I can get started here. All right, I'm getting a little feedback that the sound's not very loud. I hope you can hear me, you guys. Okay, let's uh, let's get in, shall we? You can hear clearly. Thank you for your for your feedback, you guys. Okay, awesome. Looks like we're good to go. Here's where we're going to go with today's training. And this week, okay, I'll give you an overview of the whole week, and then we're going to jump into today's content. Today, the positivity model and creation. This is where I start with all of my clients. This is the operating instructions for the equipment of your own mind. That's why I start with this. For almost 30 years now of clinical practice, this is what I come back to with all of my clients. And today you'll get a powerful uh, training on the positivity model. Some of you are already familiar with that. But we're going to jump in and talk especially about the evaluation mode tomorrow, Tuesday, the creation model. This is where it gets really fun because our life, we get to create and live the life that we love. And, and there's a specific way that that happens. So we'll get into the creation model tomorrow. Wednesday, the brain, neural pathways, and your brain's fight or flight response. This is so important to understand because anxiety is what gets in the way of most productive creation. I'll, I'll explain exactly how that works to you so that you'll see it. And Here's the thing with much of what we're covering here. Until you see it as a choice, it's not. And so you just roll with whatever your programming is. And that is so powerful. So when we get to the neural pathways, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Thursday, the influence quadrant. This is a model that helps to explain how we can obtain a level of influence with other people. But we'll also talk about our seven key relationships and why those are so important to keep in order with some specific skills on how to apply that, including five strategies for effective communication. That's coming up on Thursday. Friday, Happynomics, a model that I developed over the course of several years to explain how happiness and economics are interrelated. And this is graduate level stuff. Make sure that you plan to be here for all five days, if at all possible. Um, just a quick word about that. I've had several people asking me 
uh, will this be recorded? And yes, it's being recorded. You probably got a, a notice about that as we started the meeting. Yes, it's being recorded. It will not be made generally available to people, but because you are registered, you have the opportunity to connect to the recording uh, for a limited time. Okay, so we'll we'll give you a chance to connect to that. I realized once I launched this, I wasn't planning on recording it. Okay, we were just going to do heads down training here. But then I realized we have so many people in different parts of the world. Australia, for example, I think it's like 2.30 in the morning in Australia right now. And so I'm not asking you to come at an unreasonable time. We will make it available to you. Watch your email for some information about that, because I'm not even sure exactly how that's going to fly. But once you get the email, there's a limited time. Okay, so check into that. Now, I've got one other thing. This is housekeeping, and then we're going to jump right into the training. One other thing that I need to let you know for our friends on YouTube. And thank you for jumping in. We are live streaming this to Utah, YouTube right now. And some of you, as you're watching on YouTube, you might be wondering, what's, what can you do to, to participate? This is the only day. This is day one of a five-day training. This is the only day we are live streaming this class. So please go to the URL I'm showing on the screen right now, drpauljenkins.com forward slash live. And that's how you can register. Now, those of you who are here in the Zoom webinar, you're already registered. You're good to go. You should have access to all five days. For those of you on YouTube, this is the only way to get the other four days. So go jump in, drpauljenkins.com slash live. We do have a few registration seats left. So go grab them. Okay, and that will give you access to the remaining classes. That also gets you in the room. And those of you who are here live, you will have an opportunity to ask questions and interact. So that's the benefit, obviously. And we welcome those of you who are watching live streaming on YouTube right now. Thank you for joining us and get registered so that you can come in and enjoy the rest of the class. Okay, here's where we start with with positivity, okay, now remember, we're getting past the, the trite, fluffy, just think positive stuff that you hear all the time. This is a principle. And when I'm talking about principles, I mean like gravity, okay? You never want wake up in the morning and think, oh, I wonder if gravity's on today. It tends to be, right? And so you, you change your behavior based on your understanding of gravity. What would happen if you were to jump from the top of a tall cliff or building? Okay, for sure or maybe? Sometimes or every time. You see how gravity works? So gravity doesn't check in with you, make sure it's okay first, you know, th that I pull on you all day long. No, gravity, it's going to happen. Now, what if you're standing at the top of that building and you think, hmm, gravity, nah, I don't believe in that. And then you jump. Same splat as the believers. Do you see this? Gravity doesn't care if you believe in it or not. Gravity simply pulls on you. It's a principle. Okay, so that's how principles work. As we talk about the positivity power up here today, the principles that govern positivity are always on. Whether you believe in them or not, whether you're aware of them or not, that's another question. But they're always on and they always affect you, just like gravity. That's why I want you to be aware of them. So here comes the model. This is, uh, and you guys, just for your information, I will not be monitoring the chat today. You guys can chat with each other, and I may put something in the chat a little later but I won't be monitoring it. I'll give you a chance to ask some questions live here in just a little bit, but we have a couple of hundred people who are participating here today. So I won't be monitoring that chat actively. Um, stay tuned for how to ask questions, okay? We're gonna get to that. Now, I want to, I want to introduce a friend. This is Aaron Linsdow. Aaron is crazy. 
which she always appreciates when a professional psychologist declares that in the front of a room somewhere. But um, here's what he did. Aaron trekked solo from the, from the Hercules Inlet on the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole, a distance of over 700 miles. He did it on his own two feet, solo. Okay, it took him like three months to accomplish this feat. Crazy, right? One of the most unforgiving climates on the planet. And Aaron shared with me as I was interviewing him at Live On Purpose Radio. Pardon me, we're live, so I'm gonna have to stay hydrated, okay? At Live On Purpose Radio, I'm interviewing Aaron, and I'm like, so Aaron, what did you learn from this experience? And he says, when it comes to survival, the most important thing to remember, you think water, food, shelter, right? Water is number four on the survival list. The number one thing, if you wish to survive, is a positive attitude, which got me excited because I didn't even prep him for that. I just was asking him, what is it? And Aaron is one of the most renowned most authoritative voices out there on uh, survival, okay, arguably, especially in, a, especially in a polar environment. And he says it's positivity, right? Because here's the thing. If you lose track of your own mind, then food, water, shelter, those are all completely irrelevant. He shared a story with me. He lives in Jackson, Wyoming. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, rural, mountainous, adventurous place to live. And he said that there was a hunter that was lost in the woods outside of Jackson. I always thought Jackson was in the woods, but whatever. And this guy, unfortunately, about 72 hours later, they found his body. He had died out there. And he shouldn't have. He had survival equipment on his person. He was appropriately dressed for the weather. A woman was lost in the same area just a couple of weeks later, and she walked out under her own power 72 hours later. She was wearing running shorts and a T-shirt. How did she survive when the prepared guy actually didn't? Now, in all fairness, we didn't interview the dead guy, so <laughs> I don't know. But... Aaron's convinced, and he knows enough about survival to know that if you lose hope, if you lose hope and your brain cannot see a way out of this, then there isn't one. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But I know also as a professional psychologist, hopelessness is the number one risk factor for suicide, suicidal behavior, suicidal ideation. And we're losing way too many people. We've got to get on top of this, okay? And it's positivity. So Aaron said positivity is number one on the survival list. Water, number four. Makes you wonder what two and three are. <laughs> yeah, and remember, he's in a polar environment. So heat and shelter are number two and three, okay? Um, positivity, number one. So keep that in mind as we talk about what we're, uh, what we're getting into today in this training so important for your very survival but it, it gets to even more than that and i think you'll see that as we get into the model now before i jump into the model we'll have a little vocabulary lesson all right the word metacognition this is a made-up word don't worry if you've never heard it before um we make up words in psychology it makes us feel smart and this is one of them metacognition now if you break it down cognition means Thinking, metacognition is a higher level. It's thinking about thinking. Okay, are you with me on this? Be careful with this. You can hurt yourself. But I want you to notice that you can do it. All right? Metacognition creates a little space. When you think about your thinking, metacognition creates a little space. In that space, is where choice exists. Think about what I just said. Metacognition creates a space. In that space is where choice exists. And until you see it as a choice, it's not. 
what that means is until you see how to control and drive your own thinking, your thinking will control and drive you. And you have to see it first. That's what I'm here for. My job is to illuminate the obvious. I love this because I get paid to tell people things they already know or to show them things they already see. But there's obvious things that are completely unnoticed right up until I call it to your attention. You'll see it immediately as soon as I show it to you. But up until that point, you're blind to it. It's kind of like the feeling of your clothing. Can you feel it? Well, now, now that I call it to your attention, it's obvious. But you, you didn't notice it until I called it to your attention. You with me? That's the space that we're in. And when it comes to our psychology and positivity, we're going to hang out in that realm a little bit. So let's go to the model. All right. This is the core. Okay. This is the foundation that we have to start with. Everything else rides on this. You might be here today thinking about your relationships, your kids, your business, your finances, your mental health, whatever it is. Here's the foundation. Okay. Once we figure out how to operate the equipment of our own mind, then we're in a position that we can steer it. All right. Until then, your thoughts will drive you. And I'll probably come back to that. Okay. Either you drive your thoughts or your thoughts are going to drive you. All right. It is what it is. Anybody feeling annoyed? Anybody want to jump out right now? I mean, it's kind of annoying to hear that from people sometimes it depends on who's saying it and why but notice that we kind of throw this phrase around it is what it is look for today all it means is where you are right now it's it's who you are what you have who you're with the way things are going without changing anything it is what it is now um, there's a story that puts a little context on this. I was speaking at the National uh, Leadership Conference, Youth Leadership Conference for the National Speakers Association in Orlando. This was a couple of years ago. And as I was waiting for my chance to present, I got to listen to this lady. Jeannie Robertson is a brilliant, brilliant humorist, comedian. Okay. And she was presenting just before me. We lost Jeannie just about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Uh, she passed away. But before she passed, wow. This lady, six foot two, thick Southern accent, the funniest G-rated family-friendly comedian on the planet. And I'm on the front row with Jeannie. Go look her up on YouTube. I mean, not right now after our webinar, okay? But go look her up. Do yourself a favor. She's got such funny content. And I'm sitting on the front row. I snapped this picture before the program started. And as I'm sitting there listening to Jeannie, I get a text message. Now, do the math for a minute. And I've seen Jeannie present before. I know if you pull out your phone and you're going through your text messages, she calls you out. You become part of the program. Okay? I didn't want that to happen. But I looked down because I got a little notification on my Fitbit, on my on my fitness tracker watch. And so I looked down and here's what I saw. Can you read this on your screen? This is from my sister, Melanie. She sent me a text that said, I, I just wanted you to know that Talon had an accident last night. He was on his annual volunteer first responder temp weekend and slipped and fell off a 30 foot dot, dot, dot. Okay, you know what dot, dot, dot means, right? It means there's more, but you don't get it here. You have to go to your phone. I'm not going to go to my phone. I don't want to have that conversation with Jeannie right now. And I know she'll do it too. And you can't slip out either. You have the same conversation all the way out. All right? So I'm just hanging tight. And I can't even remember what she said after that. I'm sure it was brilliant. But I was focused on this family. This is Talon, my niece Katrina, their little baby Sage. This was taken about two weeks before the accident. And now I'm wondering what's going on. My own dad lost his father to an accident when he was five. A good friend of mine crashed his plane in Utah Lake just a few miles from my office. About 10 years ago, left his wife and family without a husband and father. 
Okay, now I'm getting this message from my sister. Now just consider how I'm feeling. How are you feeling as I share the story with you? Well, Jeannie finished up. I slipped out into the hall because I have a I have a text that I need to read and a call I need to make, right? So I slip out into the hall and I first open my phone and I look at the rest of the text. Pick up where we left off. Slipped and fell off a 30-foot waterfall and broke both his ankles, seriously injured his knee. They could use your prayers. Oh. Did you feel it? Did you feel it like I did? The relief? Oh. Thank goodness. Okay, now just check this out for a minute. Okay. I want you to to tune in to what you felt when I shared the rest of the message with you. Okay, do you notice it? And I have to ask you, were you pretending to be relieved? No, it was genuine, right? Just like it was for me. I called my niece. I'm like, oh, sweetie, I just heard what happened. She said, thanks for calling, Uncle Paul. We're just feeling so grateful. So notice that we're feeling good about this outcome, right? What is wrong with us, people? Is that sick and demented that my nephew has two broken ankles and we're feeling good about this? Just notice it. And it doesn't mean we're sick and demented. It reveals what our brain is doing. This is what I want you to see. Let's go back to the model. I know I told you guys we're going to move fast, right? So stay with me. Take some notes. I'm going to give you a chance to ask some questions in a bit, okay? It is what it is. Here's what I want you to see. And and what it is in this example is that my nephew, two broken ankles. It is what it is, okay? Now, what is your brain doing? Your brain is, is evaluating this situation. That's why I put the word evaluation here, okay? You can't turn this off any more than you can turn off gravity. Your brain has to evaluate. I'm inviting you right now to see it, to notice that your brain is constantly judging, isn't it? Think about it. You are judging yourself pretty harshly sometimes. You judge your family. You judge your kids. You judge your business. You judge your boss, your coworkers, you judge your finances, you judge the weather, you judge the economy, you're judging me. It's cool, I'm judging you. (laughs) You notice it? You can't turn it off. Now the word evaluation implies comparison with some standard, all right? Comparison with some standard. So to ask, you know, is, is this good or bad or, lucky or unlucky or whatever, you have to compare it to something. Uh, Some of you have met me in person. Most of you haven't. Am I a tall man? You might not know, okay? It might help if I show you a picture of me. Okay, now this, now you might think, oh, he's not as tall as I thought, right? You guys, I'm six foot two. And compared to most people, that's pretty tall, but I'm standing next to Mark Eaton who also passed away last year. Uh, But what a giant of a man. At seven foot four, he's still one of the top shot blocking heroes in the NBA, in the National Basketball Association. He used to play center for the Utah Jazz, my favorite team. Am I a tall man or not? Well, it depends on who or what you compare me to. Okay? Just notice that. So your brain has to have something to compare it to. And if you don't have an immediate standard of comparison, you'll make one up. And you got a really good imagination too. Okay, so going back to our model, it is what it is. And what it is is two compound fractures, both angles. Got it? Now, can you imagine anything better than that? Oh, you can. Yeah, like no broken ankles. Like, how about no injuries at all? How about no accident occurs? How about 
everything goes just like I planned it to. Because that's how my life rolls. Not. See, that's La La Land, you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not your reality. That's not what it is. But you can imagine that. Now, when you take what it is, two broken ankles, and you compare it in your imagination to something better, like no broken ankles, then how do you feel about two broken ankles? This sucks. I'm sorry. I'm using really strong language. Okay, you got me fired up. <laughs> and you're, you're not wrong about this. All right? How you feel, you're always right about how you feel. How you feel is 100% consistent with how your brain is doing this. And if you compare what you've got to something better, you're going to feel worse about what you got. You with me? Now, I know some of you, you're going to be like, well, what about this? And what about that? Just hang on to that for a minute and let me share the rest of the model with you. Okay? And I'm going to coach a few of you on this today. So, so hold those questions for just a minute. Let's just take a look at what's going on. All right? What it is is simply what it is. It could always be better. And if you compare what you got, how you're doing, what your kids are up to, whatever, you compare that to something better, you're going to feel worse about what you got in evaluation mode. Pretty clear? Okay, now let's move on. You're probably getting ahead of me. Can you imagine anything worse? than two broken ankles. Yes, you can. And in fact, I helped you with this because I told you where my brain went as I shared the story about my dad losing his father to an accident, my friend who crashed his plane, okay? Can you imagine anything worse than two broken ankles? Yes. Like the death of that young father on Mount Timpanogos. That's what I imagine. Now, when I found out what it is, is two broken ankles. When you compare that to something far worse, how do you feel about what you got? Woohoo! Woohoo! Right? And I want you, please remember, you did not pretend to feel relieved. And neither did I. It's real. You are always right about how you feel. How you feel is 100% consistent with the way your mind is doing these processes. I've only shared one of them with you so far. Now, here's the kicker. And we've, we've got to establish something. I'm going off of the slides for a minute. Look, this is important. What it is, is all you've got. Settle in on that for a minute. Is that true? And don't take my word for it. You run it through your own filters. See if that's true. I'm not saying it's all you could have. We're getting to that. Okay. But I'm saying by definition, what it is, is all you got. Okay. And what it is, no matter what it is, is always. My editor tells me to always avoid the word always and never use the word never, okay? What it is is always between better and worse. Is that true? This is so important. Let's just agree on that, okay? Before we move too, too much farther. What it is, is always between better or worse. What that means is we can take our version of what it is. And honestly, I don't care. I know that sounds so cold. <laughs> I do care about you, okay? But I don't care if your situation is a divorce, a bankruptcy, a mental health issue, a diagnosis, a, a terminal condition. All right, I care about you, but it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It could always be better or worse. Notice that. Just notice it. 
Okay, I'm not here to tell you how to think. I don't have that kind of authority. I just want you to see that you are thinking and your thinking matters. It makes a difference because it changes how you feel. If you take your what it is, no matter what it is, and you compare it to a standard of something better than that, you're going to feel worse. This is what we call depression. That red arrow, that signifies depression. And I'm not talking a clinical diagnosis of depression. I'm talking a human experience of depression. Okay? Now, what happens on the other side when we take our what it is, no matter what it is, and we compare it to the standard of something worse, because it could always be worse. How do we feel about what we've got? We feel gratitude. Okay, that green arrow represents gratitude. Is this exciting? Man, I get so fired up about this. Now, here's a, I'm going to give you a little brain hack for each one. When you get into the full course of the positivity power up, I've got little challenge tasks and things for you to do there. And I'll tell you about that if you want to get involved later. But for now, let's just do a few simple things that we can do for the next few days. Okay, because we're crunching through this. A lot of my clients take about six weeks to go through the whole course. We're going to crunch through it in five days this, this week. Okay, so here's your first assignment. Write this down. If you're taking notes, here's assignment number one, the gratitude power up. Here's how it works. Um, and maybe just write down these numbers, 25-5. 25 five okay five stands for five days starting today you make a list of 25 things in your life that you are sincerely grateful for right now the way they are without changing anything okay this is the gratitude power up now you here's the power up part because <laughs> we've all done gratitude lists you've probably done them before here's what powers it up you take your list of 25 and at least half of those every day. That's 13 if you're doing the math. At least half of those every day are about the hard stuff. Okay? It's about the the whatever in your life right now is difficult, painful, frustrating, annoying, agonizing, whatever it is, okay? And you you find something in that that you can be grateful for. A friend of mine, Kevin Clayson, wrote a book called Flip the Gratitude Switch. Such a powerful idea. When you flip the power switch, when you flip the light switch, the lights come on and illuminate the room. What I want you to do is flip the gratitude switch on whatever it is that's kicking your trash right now. Okay? Difficult, painful, it's a diagnosis, it's a condition, it's whatever, okay? Whatever you're dealing with, a relationship, what are you grateful for from or inside of that? Okay. I'm not saying you have to be grateful for the difficult thing itself. I'm saying open it up, look inside of it, rummage around until you find something in there. And I guarantee it's there. I guarantee you have to flip the switch and, and ask your brain to find what you're grateful for. Okay. That's the power. Now, the other half of your list, the other 12 can be easy things. All right. People always put down health and family and puppies and rainbows and indoor plumbing. Yeah. You get freebies every day. Okay. But let's stretch a little bit and go to uh, the hard stuff for at least half of your list every day. Are you in? Are you in? Okay. Do this. I promise it's going to change the game. We're instructing your brain to go a different direction for you. Okay. And it may seem simplistic, but there's a lot of research that backs this up. I'm not going to share all that with you today. I just want you to see that this is a powerful hack to get you into a positive evaluation of what it is, the gratitude power up. Okay. That's your first assignment. Five days. Go for it. Okay. Let's move on because I want to get through the rest of the model with you. And then we're going to save hopefully about 15 minutes or so for me to do some coaching and and answer some questions with you, okay? Here we go. Creation. Now, this 
you cannot turn off any more than you can turn off evaluation or gravity. It's going to happen. It's a principle of psychology, okay? I want you to be aware of it so that you can maybe step into a higher level of control about it. Now, creation is about what is to be. And that doesn't exist yet. We haven't created it yet. So the only place it exists now is in our imagination. You with me? So let's explore our power of creation here for just a minute. I want to give you an assignment. We're going to take the next 10 minutes. And this is always risky to do on a webinar because I'll lose people. But if you promise to just come back in 10 minutes, I'm going to send you out there to use 10 minutes to somehow use your brilliant creative mind to come up with some way to make your life worse. Okay, you ready? Oh, no, 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 no. Please stay in your seat. <laughs> okay. I don't actually want you to do this. What I want you to notice is how quickly your brain came up with half a dozen ways that you could do that. You can totally pull this off. Now, you would never do it on purpose. I mean, we do it accidentally all the time. But notice how quickly your brain came up with half a dozen ways to make your life worse. This is actually good news, okay? And here's what I mean. Um, we just discovered and illustrated with this that you can make a mess. Anybody questioning that? And watch the news. People are making messes all day, every day, okay? And people come to me all the time, and they're like, I've got this big mess in my life. And I'm like, yeah, you're a powerful creator. <laughs> okay, now look, you can make a mess. This is good news, because if you can make a mess, you can make. That's pretty cool. You can make. You have creative power. Now, what you make, that's up to you. I'm seeing a few things coming through in the chat. I get little notices down here. Yeah, it's easier to be destructive than creative. You're right. I've got a whole poem that I share about that, about builders and wreckers. If there's time, maybe I'll share it with you later. But it, it's always easier to destroy than it is to create. That is true. There's a reason for that that I'll share with you in just a minute. But creation depends on the intention of the creator. So let's go back to the model. Check this out. Oh, this gets so much fun. From here on out, oh. Um, you're what it is, whatever it is. Your current circumstances, your situation, the, wherever you find yourself in your life, your relationships, your finances, your business, it is what it is. It could always be worse. And it could always be better. Now, when, but we don't know where it's going. How are you doing next week? You don't know. You, I know some of you are like, well, I'm doing better because I'm doing the positivity power up this week, Dr. Paul. Yes, you're taking intentional effort to go somewhere, but you don't know. You don't know how you're doing next week. All you can do is imagine or predict or expect at this point, and that's all imaginary. When you imagine or predict or expect that what's coming is even worse than what you've already got, how do you feel? My friends, this is anxiety. Okay? On day three, we're going to get into that. What's that? Wednesday. <laughs> On Wednesday, I will open up the psychology behind fear and anxiety for you. The number one barrier do success and happiness. We're going to bust that wide open. This is anxiety. When you imagine that what's coming is going to be even worse. Because what happens when you imagine or predict or expect that what's coming is even better than what you already got? How do you feel? And you're not making this up. You guys, this is hope. Do you remember when we're like, woohoo? earlier. 
You are so excited and you have anticipation and eagerness as you await something even better than what you've already got. Look, it doesn't exist yet. So all you can do is imagine. And we will dive into creation tomorrow, Tuesday. That's our whole subject tomorrow. Make sure you're here because what's coming in your life doesn't exist yet. All right. You've got something to do with it. Please don't forget that. And I'll give you a six part process by which creation occurs tomorrow. So make sure that you come back for that. We'll dive in. But I want you to focus on the feelings right now. Okay. What it is just is what it is. What's coming doesn't exist. When we imagine that it's worse, we feel anxiety. That's the red arrow. When we imagine that it's better, we feel hope. That's the green one. And hope, I remember I told you earlier, hopelessness. Number one, psychological risk factor for suicide. Hope literally saves lives. I did a webinar not too long ago. Some of you may have been here for the hope class. All right. And the good news is with this model, you can create hope on demand with your own mind. This is how it's done. Okay, here's your brain hack. For you Star Wars fans, you're like, oh yeah, I know that guy, BB-8. We're just gonna use the name to trigger where we're going with this. Look, eight o'clock is coming for sure. Just check your own mind and see if that's true. Look at your clock if you need to. Is eight o'clock coming? Yes, it is. Um, are you gonna be around for eight o'clock? Well, who knows? But probably, I mean, you've made it to every eight o'clock so far your entire life. You got a really good track record. There's only two options. Things cannot be exactly the same. Think about it. You're going to be at least a few hours older. Regardless of what time zone you're in right now. All right. When eight o'clock hits, you're going to be a little older. You might be more tired, more hungry. I don't know. Depends on what you did just before eight. So, regardless, of uh, what circumstances are going on around you, things have to be either better or, wait for it, worse. At eight o'clock, and I'm not even talking next month, next week, or next year. I'm talking at eight o'clock. We already know that you could make things worse. We already did that exercise. Please don't do this. Here's the hack. BB-8, better by eight. Can you remember that? What can you think of right now to make things better by eight? In fact, you know what? Let's just do, this will be fun. Go to the chat. Those of you who are here live, those of you who are watching on YouTube, um, you won't be able to participate in this piece, but let's just, Test this. Go to the chat. Now, I don't want you to enter anything. I want you to type in an idea that came to your mind about how you could make things in your life better by eight. Don't hit enter. Don't hit enter yet. Just type it in. Okay. Are you there? Get into the chat. We're going to do what I call a waterfall. All right. Of ideas. So um, just an idea. What could you do to make some aspect of your life a little better by eight? Go to the chat. Now, you have to select everyone, okay? There's hosts and panelists, and there's everyone. I want you to chat to everyone so that we can all see it. What could you do? Okay, now I'm going to count down three, two, one, and after I count down, I want you to just hit enter, all right? And then we'll just see this waterfall of ideas. You ready? A little idea. Here we go. Three, two, one, enter. Wow, look at that. I'm just gonna highlight a few of these, okay? I am spend time playing with my wife and kids. Yes, Morgan, thank you. Smile more, Mike, you think? Susan, take a walk. Laughter, Hendley, absolutely. Grace, meditate. Jenny, drink more water. Janet, connect with loved ones. Steve, win the lottery. We're gonna have to talk about that, Steve. Because it may or may not make things better. That depends on some other things. <laughs> I love the idea, though. Trina, clean the kitchen. Yolanda, eat a better meal by eight. Brent, close more deals. Yes. Kirsten, I could plan and make dinner. You could, couldn't you? 
I could uh, show my kids more love. There we go. Hug my kids. Look for classes. Stop looking at social media. Smile. Better communication. Sleep. Cook delicious meals. There are probably a hundred more here. Tune in. How does that feel? How does that feel? This, this is not next week, next month, next year. This is eight o'clock. And look at all the ideas that came from just the people who are here with us right now. Those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you've got your own ideas. Put it in the comments, okay? They're on YouTube. I'm not monitoring that right now, but I'll get back to it a little later, okay? Wow, powerful. Notice how that feels, okay? Going back to the model, we get to choose a couple of things, all right? You don't always get to choose what it is. Have you noticed that? Sometimes what it is just lands in your lap. But we have two processes that are going on all the time. You can't turn them off anymore than you can turn off gravity. Valuation and creation. What do you get to choose? Which direction you take. Those two processes that are going on in your mind all the time. That is what the positivity power-up is all about. Now, I've given you the model, okay? Some of you might be thinking, hey, I got to have more of this. I put a link on the screen, positivitypowerup.com slash join today. I'm not going to spend much time on that. I'm not here to sell that to you, but that is our membership for Live on Purpose Central, where you have ongoing access, not only to the Positivity Power Up that we're covering this week, but you get the workbook. You get copies of my books to support that. We have supporting videos. We have live coaching. There's A lot going on there. I'll let you explore it yourself. And for this week only, we are doing a special promotion where you can get your first month for a crazy low price. I'll tell you more about that on Friday, but it's open now. I checked this morning and we've got it open. So if you want to jump in, you certainly can do that. One last thought before we jump into some coaching. People ask me all the time, Dr. Paul, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to stay positive? When I know how important it is, and I even, I've even i even learned your model, and I know how, how it works. The, the image that I'm showing you on the screen right now is a, a place that my son took me several years ago at Thanksgiving. We were on the island of Oahu celebrating my parents' 50th anniversary with them. And my son took me hiking on this trail. This is called the Stairway to Heaven. And... It is, it's basically steep metal stairs going up the sheer edge of a volcano, four and a half miles round trip. Um, And it took some soul searching to get up there for me. I mean, it's trespassing. We're not going to talk about that today, but (laughs) between my fear of breaking the law and my fear of heights, it was not easy to get on that trail. Here's a picture of my son on the trail below me. This is Adam. He's standing on the trail. Do you see how steep this is? It gives me the heebie-jeebies just to look at it, okay? And I have a little bit of a fear of heights, okay? It was kind of hard to just take this picture because I want to keep hanging on too. So just check in with that for a minute. Now, which direction are we going if we lose hold? (laughs) We've just circled back to where we began. Do you remember I was talking about gravity? You never get up and wonder if gravity's on. Is that true on the stairway to heaven? You never hear of someone falling up, do you? Park your car on a hill, leave the brake off. Which direction does it roll? Sometimes or every time. Do you see what I'm talking about? Default is down. Default is down. Elevation requires effort. And the view is totally worth it. This is a view from the top. Default is down. Elevation requires effort. Is That is true in every aspect of life, whether you're on the stairway to heaven, whether it's in your relationships. That's where it happens, okay? You have to put in some effort. When you notice that it's hard, great. Because that means we're on the right track. That means we're going the right direction. If it seems easy, we might be rolling downhill. And I know what I'm sharing with you is simple. It's not easy. It's going to take a little bit of reprogramming. 
to wrap your head around the positivity concepts that we'll be talking about this week. I'm so excited that you're here. We're going to take some time now. I've, I've saved about 10. I can stick around for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Might be able to push it into 20. Um, we've committed to an hour a day, okay? And I am clearing my calendar to be here with you. Those of you who are here live will have a chance now to raise your hand. If you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you will see um, an option to raise hand. You see it there? Uh, that's a little digital hand. What will happen is uh, you'll come into a special list for me. I will give you an invitation to come on as a panelist. You'll turn on your camera and your microphone and we'll talk. Okay. So if you want to do it that way, you can. If there's still time, I will go to the q and I'm not going to get to every question. Okay. We've just got, we've got a couple of hundred people here today. So we're not going to get to every question, but I'll get to what I can in the next few minutes. And I will uh, mostly go to those of you who are raising your hand. I've got several. Okay, let's go. Morgan, come talk to me. Turn on your camera, turn on your mic, and let's talk, shall we? Those of you who are on YouTube, remember, drpauljenkins.com slash live will get you registered for the next four days of our training. We would love to have you in the room with us. This is the only day we're live streaming to YouTube. Morgan. Hey. Hello, my friend. How can I help you today? What questions are on your mind after our training today? Sure. Um, I think probably the biggest thing is just how do you work with the family dynamic? Because I have several kids. Mm. And so how do you help transfer this mentality to them? I mean, other than the obvious, yeah, you talk about stuff, but um, I was particularly one of my daughters, she seems really prone to sort of cycling into real negative. She's, she's a wonderful daughter. She's about seven, mm -hmm. but if she gets kind of out of shape on something, it's real easy for her to spiral. And yeah. she gets to a point where she's really difficult to reach, um, to, to calm her back down. Right. And so, you know, how do you how do you help somebody, you know, sub 10 years old kind of work through some of these things so that their responses to it is what it is kind of scenarios. How do you help somebody of that age range maybe to implement some of this? Such a great question. The first thing that came to my mind, Morgan, is that we are programming our children. Just like our parents programmed us. Okay, now, and by programming, I even mean language. We don't mm -hmm. choose to speak our native language. We're programmed with it, right? By people who didn't give us a choice. And so those developmental years are so important. And I appreciate your question because you're talking about, okay, uh, I'm programming my kids. What can I do to mm -hmm. help program these principles that will help to increase their joy and their success and their productivity in life? So just at that level, I want to acknowledge your question as being so profoundly important. Okay, now here's, here's the kicker. <laughs> Programming takes a while. Hmm. You know, if we use uh, language, for example, um, many of our, our, our members that live on Purpose Central speak more than one language. I have a second language. I don't know if you have a second language. But that to learn a second language requires a whole lot of programming. And it, so when we put it in that context, you look at your kids and they're already programmed with whatever they're programmed with. So if we want to change it up a little or if we want to change it up for ourselves, it's going to take some repetition and some practice. So the most important thing is to internalize these principles ourselves so that they become a natural part of how we show up, how we operate, how we interact with our kids. It, it, there's an old saying that uh, our kids sometimes can't hear what we're saying because what we're doing is so loud. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so example obviously becomes important. We've got a lot of 
resources for for how to train and teach kids these principles in and i don't know if you're a member of live on purpose central but if you were to consider that especially with the the special price we're offering this week there's a place in there called the parenting power up and in the parenting power up we go into a little different model it looks like this it's about the interplay between control and maturity mm -hmm. and how we as parents have to share control with our kids, but it depends on their level of maturity. So you're talking about your daughter who's 10 and I would guess without any other information that she's probably bumping up into stage two maturity. Mm -hmm. we handle that differently than we would for a kid who's maybe a toddler or sure. a really immature teenager for that matter. <laughs> yeah she's definitely so yeah she's definitely bumping in that second she's you know like her big hobby interest right now is cooking and so that's that's been a lot of conversation of okay we want to allow you to cook more but obviously there are dangers to cooking right. <laughs> and there is expense and we don't want you to waste things and you know so so yeah it definitely feels like she's just in that right on track i think that the, those parenting models are going to be really really beneficial to you as just another foundational piece and then the specifics how you apply that those are the things that we pick up in our coaching calls in our live conversations there on the platform um, where you can get more specific ideas about okay, what do I do with this? You know, the, the videos on YouTube cover a lot of the principles, but you don't have a chance for the personal interaction and application that you would have on the platform. Sure. So that, that's where I'd start you, Morgan. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And uh, also just a side note, the parenting videos is how I started following you. So yeah. Just wanted to let you know that. So that's a, appreciate it. Thank you. I'm, I'm aware that those parenting videos are, usually the entry point for a lot of us you know another thing i've found morgan parenting is the number one personal development program on the planet <laughs> there's a lot of reasons i say that you're chuckling so i know that you know what i'm talking about <laughs> absolutely thanks for jumping in today morgan good to talk to Thank you. you let's go next to i've got uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to get your name correct. Otgan Chiemeg Dulam. Apologies for mispronouncing names. I've got a couple of languages in my tool belt, but that's not one of them. If you can come on, turn on your camera and your mic, I would love to chat with you. Hello. Hi, Dr. Paul. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, no, yeah, no. Um, I'm okay. I'm true follower of follower for your parenting um, videos on YouTube. Awesome, thank you. Um, so yeah. So myself is mother of four, and I I work for school as a, a special needs assistant. Oh, wow. And my, yeah, I have the same as you. I, I have young adults' children, um, but my youngest one is 10 years old. And uh, yeah, I, I, I can echo what Marvin said. <laughs> wow. So uh, my 10 years old have, um, yeah, she, uh, I explained to, uh, I explained to her your, um, you know, that the, uh, this game, um, what, what you showed that uh, control and um, <laughs> yeah, control and maturity. Uh -huh. And she's saying that, you know, uh, mom, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very low in, in my control uh, when I use uh, screen time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because she, she, she has lots of interest. And she she likes to use screens, uh, iPad, and everything, um, but she can't uh, stop herself. So um, I explained to her that you know if you can't control those areas, mommy and daddy need to you know step up. Uh, so uh, one one time she gave away all her three d devices, <laughs> and oh, wow. just 
just leave uh, from my room. And, and then after like three and a half weeks, and uh, I said, uh, how are you doing? And I'm missing my devices, but I'm still not ready. What do you think? I said, what do you think? <laughs> so, um, yeah, she, 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 we are working as a, as a family, we are working using your, yeah, yeah. But my question okay. for today, uh, I'm excited about this, uh, this week. Mm -hmm. As a parent, you know, uh, we have lots of thoughts. Uh, uh, as, a, as a parent, you know, how yeah. can we do better for uh, our children's uh, life? Um, but uh, my challenge is um, she is 10 years old, mm -hmm. but some areas she is acting as a, already a, you know, a teenager. Teenager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, she, she knows when she, she will come to me. Mom, eh, like at that, that, that time, I feel like she's still so young, even younger than her age. Yep. But some areas, mm, I don't need you. Right. <laughs> so uh, it, it's challenging sometimes. How can we balance, you know? I just ask her, uh, what do you, what do you uh, say about this? You know, sometimes she just isolates herself the the parenting power up that we have on the platform at live on purpose central i mentioned that to morgan and it's a powerful collection of ideas and applications that that you can apply we've got sections in there about working with teenagers mm -hmm. if i were to pull this back to what we're talking about today what we're working on this week is to help you get control of this. And that <laughs> changes the game, okay? That you're going to see other applications as we go through the week here. I mentioned to Morgan that um, parenting is the number one personal development program on the planet. And there's a reason why so many people on our YouTube channel are seeing the parenting videos first because they go to, to Google and they type in, how do I get my kids to listen without yelling or something? <laughs> and in fact, if you type in that phrase, you'll see me <laughs> because that's our number one video out there on YouTube. And what it really comes down to, I've told a lot of my clients this in the last few weeks, you don't have to change a thing. You have to change a think. It's a little different word there. You don't have to change a thing. You have to change a think. And what that does is it puts us in position as parents. Um, when you get on an airplane, for example, okay? And we've all been in this position where you're traveling on a commercial airliner and before you take off, they go through the safety routine, right? Just in case you've been in a coma for 20 years, they show you how to fasten a seat belt. <laughs> and, and there's a part where they say, if we ever lose cabin pressure, these oxygen masks will fall down from the ceiling. And you're supposed to put it on your face and fasten it on with a little rubber band. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And then they always say, if you're traveling with young children or someone who needs assistance, put your own mask on first. And they have to say that because as parents, we just wanna take care of our kids, right? But if we're out cold in the aisle and we can't breathe, then we're just in the way now. and We're not helping anybody. So you got to put your own mask on first. And it's so important what we're talking about this week to get your mind into a place where you're good. Okay. Where what your daughter is doing, she's 10, right? What she's doing doesn't matter. Sometimes she's being that teenager. Sometimes she's just a little girl still. You're good either way. See, that presents the best options for moving forward because her mom is good, right? <laughs> so that's how it ties into what we're talking about this week. It's so important to understand these things. And then like I was talking to Morgan about, there are ways that we can teach that to our kids too. In fact, one more thing before I turn you loose. Um, did you say your daughter, your kids are aware of this? Thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
there's a video out there that helps with that. It's called How to Convince Your Parents to Get a Dog. And that's me teaching this model. It's on YouTube. You can go find it. We've got it on the platform too. We have a whole section of videos that live on Purpose Central that you can use with your kids. But to get them up to speed so that they understand the principle, and it sounds like you've already done that because you're having excellent conversations. Yeah, your, your, your videos are really, really like a, a torch for par uh, our parenting, you know? And uh, she, she asked one day, like, mom, do you think I'm on the stage too <laughs> yet on the <laughs> using screen? I'm so glad you have that language that you can talk to each other about that because that's huge. And it shows that she is at least on stage two, which yeah. is much easier than if she's defiant and, and not cooperating with you. Yeah, that's also uh, it, uh, before we uh, finish, uh, I think uh, for many parents you know, agree with, with me is, you know, uh, both parents on the same page is just so important. But, uh, yeah because uh, we are living in, in just yes. crazy the yes. oceans of information. And, uh, you know, so... On, on Thursday, we're going to get into those relationships. And, and when you say both parents on the same page, there are some key principles that we will go over on Thursday. So make sure you're here for that too. We've got a lot coming this week. I know, I know. I'm, I'm so glad my husband is uh, becoming on the same page now. So because of you, <laughs> thank so you awesome. so much. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's great to talk to you. We've, I know we're past our hour, but I promised I'd stick on for a few. Let's, Mike, let's go to you next. And I think that's going to be about all we have time for today. But remember, come tomorrow, every day this week. Okay, jump in because we're covering a different aspect of the positivity power up each day this week. Let's see if we got uh, Mike. Are you here? Can you turn on your mic and your camera? There he is. Still need you to unmute so I can hear you. There you go. Hey. Yeah. What's, yeah. What's on your mind as we're wrapping up today? Oh. All this is awesome. The, the creation evaluation. I get stuck in the evaluation cycle, though, always comparing myself to better so much more at home than at work. I find it so much easier to, to disconnect from stuff at work because I'm like, well, whatever is what it is. Cool. I'm moving on. But at home, I get mm, just caught up in my own head because, oh, the neighbor's kid. Look at them. They're off. They're, they're, they're swimming a thousand yards. My kids won't swim a hundred yards or whatever it is. And I'm comparing it to like, I don't know. How, how do I? How can I get unstuck from comparing myself unfavorably at home <clears throat> when I can see my way through doing it here at work? Yeah, I've given you some starting places today. Okay, do the do the uh, gratitude power up and the better by eight. Jump in with that because what we're doing is we're starting to retrain the brain. I, one thing that I love about your question, Mike as soon as we see that there are other options, our brain starts to tell us that we should be doing that instead of what we're currently doing. And then we feel bad because we're not doing it yet. <laughs> no, especially with the kids. It's so easy to get caught up in the, the oh, I, I see this other kid, my kid's age, that's so much more mature than my kids are willing to be or right. whatever. Yeah, it's, Here's but my kids are awesome. So yeah, I need to make the gratitude list. Get so on that because I, I could, Notice it. Start with that. I want to take away the pressure for you and anybody else who's <clears throat> in our class this week. You don't have to change anything. What you're doing is totally fine. Especially compared to something worse. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. we can't turn this off. I just want you to see it. If you'll see it, it will put you back into a position of choice, okay? Until you see it as a choice, it's not. And one of the things I love about your question is you see that there's another option. here. Now, how to do that, that's going to take some, some practice and program, okay? Yeah, because the, the world's, uh, there's a lot of pressure on kids to do a lot of stuff and, and as parents to, and to help our kids do stuff. And it's, 
Yeah. That, that my kids are nine and 12. And so the, the, the weight keeps getting heavier and heavier. Like, oh man, not only do you need to play these sports, you, be, you need to be good at them. No, I just have fun. Like what, what happened to that? What, what happened to, oh man, look at you. You skated a, a thousand yards. Yeah. Who said you had to do it in four and a half seconds? you're you're identifying very correctly <clears throat> there are cultural traditional messages out there that can kind of get in our way you know like you should be doing this or you need to be doing that or it has to be better and bigger and faster and taller and it just doesn't when you see that process going on it puts you back into a position of choice but when I say it's a choice, it's kind of like playing the guitar is a choice. All right. You can, I don't know if you play the guitar or not. Right? No, I'm, I'm not a musically inclined kind of guy. Listen to radio. <laughs> I, you know what? I signed up for guitar lessons when I turned <clears throat> 50. When I, when I turned 50. And yeah. some people think, well, you're too old when you're 50. No, you're not. But there's a process. You can't just choose the guitar, pick it up, and in, in your you know virtuoso playing away on the mic. No, you choose it, and then you get to do a whole bunch of stuff to start reprogramming your brain to be able to develop the skill sets. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So <clears throat> participation here is huge. Okay, you've decided you signed up for this. I don't know what all your reasons were, Mike, but. There was something in your head that says, wait, there's another option. There's something better for me out there. I'm in, right? And now you get to do the reps and to put it. So I would just invite you to be very, very, very patient and tolerant with yourself as you go through this process and with your kids too. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more through the week about how this applies to families and relationships. In fact, it's, I'm, I'm just going to give you a little piece of that right now. Because here in our model, I'm finding a lot of times that parents are in creation mode. And in creation mode, what are we focused on? How it could be better. Which, right? Which right underneath that gets you stuck in comparing to worse. Well, and our, <clears throat> kid, our kids are often in evaluation mode. Because what they're wondering is, how am I doing? And then they get this message from their parents that they could be doing better. And it feels to them like they're not good enough. See, that creates a negative emotion for our kids. And society does this and traditions do this and our communities do this all the time. You need to do this. You have to be doing that, whatever. Okay, And it creates this pressure. So there's ways, and we'll talk about this more, especially on Thursday when we get into relationships. The, uh, there's ways that we can start in a positive evaluation. This is why I want you to do the, the gratitude exercise and better by eight. Because the way your kids are doing, for example, is really good, okay? Compared to something worse, it's really good. I mean, I had a, I had a <clears throat> dad that I was coaching not too long ago and he says, my son's having this problem and that problem with school. And, and I said, wait, wait, stop. Your kid's in school? And he rolled his eyes a little bit. He's like, okay. Because he could be dealing with some other problem, right? And some of you are. But it could always be better. It could always be worse. We're going to train and practice our brain here to notice that where we are, is really good okay really yeah. good and it could even get better that's what tomorrow's all about okay we're gonna that's jump what we're all here for tomorrow hey mike thanks for jumping in and for hanging thank you. longer so that we could talk for a minute yeah thank you awesome you guys are awesome thank you for being here i've kept you long enough for today we've got a Full week. Remember, tomorrow we're getting into creation mode. You want to be here for that because this is all about what is to be. Let's get good with where we are. That's evaluation. And let's jump in to create an even better future. I'm working for you. I've got my whole week cleared so that I can hang out with you guys. Remember on YouTube, 
if you are watching on YouTube, this is the last day of our five day training that will be live streamed to YouTube. Please go to drpauljenkins.com, spelled with a DR, drpauljenkins.com slash live. Live, that will get you there. Okay. And you can register to attend the other four days. We would love to have you join us. 